You're listening to a gag on this podcast. <laughs> What's got in the cup? Looks like a little kick karate guy. Look, I'm like a gerbil. It's water. Oh, okay. I'll take some water. I just, I just did a meditation class. So I, I feel okay. kind of like. Uh, well, welcome to the gag on this podcast. <laughs> going to ruin that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't meditate. I meditate. I do. <laughs> I do want, oh look, I have mushroom juice today. Mm-hmm. Hey, there you go. I'm gonna drink this during our little session. What the hell is mushroom juice? <laughs> it's, well, it's, you think it is. Yeah, is it really? Ju- <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Wow, so you don't have to put it on food or anything? You just don't have it? to put it in a peanut butter sandwich? <laughs> Interesting. Wow. I didn't know that was, I guess it's legal in Oakland now, right? I Mushrooms? Know. I don't know what's legal where. I don't know. There was a guy in uh, by Lake, by Lake Merritt uh, selling mushrooms on the side. He's like, it's legal. It's legal. I swear. And he had very sanitized jars. Every pot convention I've been to lately has selling mushrooms. This is where I got, you know, that. I like mushrooms. 1950. When, when was Pearl Harbor? That's what this sounds like right now. I fucking Jesus love Christ. <laughs> All right. This is with Pearl Harbor. Wow. 1941. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, boy. This is the December 1950s? 7th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the gag on this podcast episode. This episode description. We'll have the show and guest social media. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Hear the episode two days before it is released. Like and follow us on social media. Like what you hear. Leave a review. Hate what you hear. Give Rob a tongue punch right in the fart box. Wow. I'll even watch it for you. Yeah, oh, wow. nice. <laughs> nice. <Touché. laughs> All right. I am Big Nick. I'm joined always by the Italian Stallion, soon to be featured in goddamn Idaho, Danny D. What? what? We got uh, my Portuguese lover, co host of the Stand Up Dads podcast, Rob. What's up? We got host of the Iambic Poetry podcast, vice president of Sacramento Poet Society, and all around great guy, Sharon. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And we are kicking <laughs> off this month long women in comedy with none other than the hilarious Oakland comedian, Jen Perez. Oh, hi. How's it going? What up? <laughs> <laughs> Women's International History Month. We're doing a Danny D month. My birthday's April 1st. We're doing all women this month. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's why we did it. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly why we did it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's exactly why. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask, I, I just have to. Were you a New York Jets cheerleader? Yes, I was. Oh, okay. really? Yes. Nice. You just see Sharon's head pop up and Rob's <laughs> eyes like. <laughs> 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 no, I just I had a cousin that was married to a Raiderette and I okay. felt horrible for them because they are treated like shit. At least the Raiderettes yes. were. Yeah. No, that's all around. That's just yeah. how men. That's how it is. That's no, but I mean, they were treated by shit by like shit by the organization it, it, as well. But you're a comedian, right? You get treated like shit, too. It's the same. Well, shit. I got treated like <laughs> shit before I did comedy, too. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I just wanted it's, more. It's all the same. Yeah. Um, it was a good experience for me in that I learned how to be responsible, even though sometimes I'm still not. Like, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, my yeah. coach would have taken me out of the game because I was five minutes late. You're supposed to be 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's that's when you're on time. If you're uh-uh. Yeah, 15 when you're minutes on time, before. You're late. <laughs> yeah, if you're not on time, you're late. And then she would take you out of the game. She didn't care. Damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it's fun. It's fun. I don't know. What, what other questions do you want to know about the Jets? I could tell you a little bit about that if you'd like. Where are the Jets located? I'm just kidding. Jesus. <laughs> no, what, uh, well, Sharon has there? something. Sharon has something. How, oh, uh, how, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, did you have to go to do those... Um, those bar um, promos and stuff where guys, you know, girls have the, I know a few women that actually go to a promo. Yeah. Bring the cheerleader with them and stuff and all that. That's so, right. Yeah. 
So I, I've done that for the majority of my 20s. I'm 36 years old. Oh, you're hot as shit, girl. I didn't know that. I thought you were like young 20s. <laughs> well, I've been, you know, I've been dancing been since I was a kid. I just never stopped, you know, yeah. like I studied dance in college and I auditioned for, I thought I wanted to be a professional dancer. I really enjoy performing. I still love dance and practice it and hopefully I'll get to perform again. But um. That's what I dedicated myself to since I was little. Like that, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a rocket, but um. Oh, okay. I was an inch too short. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's high height requirements. I yeah. figured. I mean. And uh, I was an inch too short, so I just kept dancing and learning. And I I went to college. A year after college, I auditioned. I made the Jets. It was my first gig. I auditioned for like all kinds of stuff. I auditioned for a full year and then I got the Jets. Wow. And uh, I, I got lucky and I was able to do it for a year. Um, unfortunately, I have an attitude problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she made me sit out a couple of games. I could not do the kicks. Clearly, I, I was not meant to be a, um, um, a rocket. I could not do the kick line. That's part of the cheerleading i couldn't do it so she would take me out of the game anytime they had a kick line so don't blame it on the height then (laughs) no no, i'm I'm literally for whatever reason i'm only five five okay well i'm way too short then fucking yeah you gotta be i think you gotta be five six and you gotta be five six and you you gotta have no booty you gotta have no booty (laughs) you know the coach gets jealous dance to it i fill in that little diaper i was i was on (laughs) i was in (laughs) i was in uh the year that i was on was 2008 it was their first year having cheerleaders so i was uh, a part of the original 22 and then after that they moved on to 44 girls and different um different types of teams but yes um we had to do the promotions that was the question you asked I've done that all throughout my 20s for various different things after the Jets. I've done all kinds of liquor promotions. I was a Hennessy girl. I did uh, I did stuff for Corona. I've done all those things, like giving people shots at parties and at liquor store- stores. I think there was one time I had to dress like a Hawaiian. So I had like a coconut bra and the strong <laughs> and everything with my hair. Like, do you want to try Could this Hawaiian hula? vodka <laughs> in like Jersey and some fucking like, you know, liquor store. <laughs> like a fucking Wawa or something? Yeah, a Wawa somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Hi. So are you from New York? I am from New Jersey. Um, Don't you hear her say water earlier? Water. <laughs> hey. I ain't gonna make no assumptions here. Oh. Oh, that was there. That's all right. I, I'm right out. I grew up right outside of New York City, so okay. I I was I I grew up commuting into the city. I I was in uh the town right outside of it, Hudson County. That's okay. where I'm from. So nice. Yeah. Now you're living in fucking Oakland. I I treated uh the same situation for the weather. Clearly, oh, um, hey, I grew up in the ghetto. I'm still in the ghetto. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, you know. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm ever going to leave because my <laughs> apartment is rent controlled. People this don't shit where they eat. So the ghetto sometimes is the safest spot to be because you don't shit where you eat most of the time. That's true. You know, I live in the ghetto. <laughs> Yeah, I moved yeah. from the ghetto to white suburbia and it's fucking boring as shit. So well, you also live well, a white suburban life with a white I know. Kid and a picket fence and a cat. I don't have yeah. the picket fence, but yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. That's off on one. <laughs> SUV? Do you have an SUV? I got the no. nat- <laughs> I yep. have the, the natural Minivan. beauty of Oakland with all its smelly people and, <laughs> and yeah. the beautiful, the lake that you could only enjoy for like five minutes until someone starts asking you for money. It's, you know. Yeah. God, how, man, I, I like can't that. imagine you walking in the streets of Oakland, man. Guys are probably like, ow. Oh, yeah, man, so sometimes so it, it makes for good bits. I write stupid <laughs> shit down all the time. Yeah, we should Guys hang and, out. We should definitely yeah, yeah. Out. get some fucking stories. Let's fucking go. Wow. I'm in Sacramento, so I'm not far. Oh, yeah, I got to go up there. Yeah, yeah. Are you just <laughs> tripping at the end of the show? What's up? What's going on? We have like seven different conversations going on. What's Is going Danny on? Danny going to start tripping at the end of this show? Maybe. I'm tripping a little. Oh, great. <laughs> Keep drinking it then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, one thing I do want to ask you about, um, and it seemed pretty cool. It's your mix open mic slash like Spanglish. 
open mic yeah. that you host? So I um I only started comedy a year ago, November 2019. So I have some, but you know, I was a performer for so many years. I'm a pretty good stage presence. I just had to learn how to write the jokes. So um I started November 2019. And then um I really wanted to make sure that I was able to do jokes in Spanish because I can't speak Spanish and my parents are Cuban. Um, and I found this group called Bromitas and they're based out of New York and they were on IG and I started with them. And then I decided to start my own mixed open mic and I do the same thing. I'll do my jokes, some of my jokes in Spanish, some of them in English. I try and invite people who are Spanish speakers or, you know, and so that can, they can tell their jokes as well. Um, you know, comedy in Spanish is booming. It's just that it's in other countries. So I get, sometimes I get people from Mexico and uh, Chile or, or, you know, uh, Southern California, a lot of people in Texas, a lot of Mexican people. Um, and, you know, people from New York, uh, Panama. Yeah. Panama City. That's always been a question to me. I, I know there's, I know a lot of the places are kind of, um, not do dominant. They have some dominant areas like, you know, California and Mexicans. Yeah. Uh, um, New York. They always say Puerto Ricans, but that's true. That's and then very also, true. And then also Florida's the Cuban stuff. That's how do you right. Feel, how do you feel when you? I know some people that's like, I'm from Honduras, man. You can't call me Mexican. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. we don't like that shit. Nobody <laughs> likes that shit. All right. The, the Asians don't like it, and the Hispanics don't. Nobody likes right. that shit. Nobody in America can. Nobody in America can understand the concept concept of knowing two languages. Hmm. They don't understand it, yeah. and they don't understand that. Hispanic people come from many different countries. It's not just one place like the U.S. English was my Mexico. second language. We get it. Not just Mexico? Are you it's kidding? It's not just Mexico. We don't oh. all speak Mexican. Okay. You don't speak Mexican? No. Nah. <laughs> not either. Uh, yeah, but it, it's well, some people. Portuguese. Some people it's hard for them to understand. But that that is true. You're you're absolutely right. Right. And some people don't know there's a lake next to Illinois. No, I thought it was ocean. I thought it was ocean. Okay. <laughs> the Great Lakes, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, girl! What are you doing? We're just fucking with Danny. That's all. Girl, you the only female representative. You didn't know that. Oh, God damn it! You yeah, letting these guys run game on you? What? I thought. Well, I went to sleep. And I woke up and I was like, oh, maybe I home alone to myself. Maybe I went on a different <laughs> plane. Like, she went the there. Ocean? That's even bad. She I went like, there. The ocean she went there. She <laughs> went the ocean get to Chicago. Oh, no. But, uh, you know, it wasn't the ocean. I've never seen a lake that big. Well, well hold on. Hold on. Well, you're missing the, the punchline okay, of this I, show. I could ask someone from a different country if that was the ocean. Uh, and she laughed at me and said, no, it was a lake. I, I don't remember what lake. Superior. Lake Superior. That's what it was. Yeah, someone from a different someone, country knew yeah. that it was a fucking lake, but yeah. not someone in America. I had just woken up. Because they yeah. have to know. They have to know those those questions in case they get stopped. You well, know? and you got to take it. You don't have to know. They American. can tell, oh, that girl's American. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucked. That's <laughs> right. She's fine. But ask the other person that looks like they're not from here. They wear it. They're wearing a lot of Adidas and uh, chain gold chains and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So on your on your mix open mic, um, I saw yeah. you have poets and stuff too, though. Yeah, I try and get. I don't plan very well. Uh, <laughs> nice. But I, the whole point of the mix open mic was to get me used to hosting things and thinking on my feet because. I have a weird I don't have as much experience as the other comedians on stage and doing crowd work and hosting things because I it was so short before the yeah, pandemic you picked started. a good time to start comedy for sure. Yeah, I figure I'll do both. I do outdoor mics whenever I can. And now I've been starting to get booked on outdoor shows, which is great. Nope. And uh, I think the show really helps. So I just let anyone go up and I tell them to put a pineapple. So here's my pineapple. I tell them to put like a pineapple emoji. And then when their five minutes are up or if I'm tired of hearing their ass, I just go, done, you're done. <laughs> oh you're, done. Wow. you're done. You're done. Nice. Uh, oh, that's great. Thank you so much. And I say, can I plug? And like some people have shows coming up, other yeah. comedians. That's um, why I never started a Zoom. Oh, like it's music, musicians, everything. I just welcome uh -huh. whoever wants to share their art. How long is it? 
It, I only do about an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes I go two hours, depending if a lot of people are joining and, and requesting. Okay. Uh, I sometimes I come up with a question of the day. Uh, normally I do. I think of oh, something cool. either a day or two before or the day of, and I play music. I try my my jokes, and then I try to interact with people. That's that's I dope. really don't know what I'm doing. When did you oh, move to perfect, California, man? I mean, you're you're a huge celebrity now. You're on gag on this podcast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> when Thank did you, you move like, to um California or Oakland? Eight years ago. Oh, and then yeah. you, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, like, I, I, I don't lose it. Don't lose it. Yeah. No, I, you know, no, I was asking because I was wondering because I know you started comedy, you know, a year. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking that probably you may move there while you're coming out here. It's like, oh, no, you were out here already. Doing yeah, to, it, it's you know, it took me that long to get, get the courage. It was always something I wanted to try. Um, I remember my last I worked at a, a bank. Um, I'm not going to say the name of the bank, but it's, you know, like a foreign bank. I, I worked a at a bank. bank. <laughs> at a bank reception, as a bank receptionist. Okay, yes, cool. I did that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, Another that's what I did. smile. Just yeah, I did all that. <laughs> and um, I worked at a bank for the, the year before I moved out here. And I remember someone at the man- bank was family members with a, fa- a comedian who was uh, at that point up and coming. Nice. And I remember him showing me, you know, he's in California. He moved there uh, like almost seven years ago. And now he's starting to and like he's showing me his clips and I'm like, oh, wow, he really did the work. I just remember like, oh, he did the work. It's possible. Yep. And uh, when I got when I moved here, um, I just decided to do all the things I enjoyed. I really enjoyed dancing and looking into that. And eventually I got the courage to start comedy. But I had been researching things and watching I like old movies and I love Lucy and match game. And I, I, it's crazy. I just, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff, old stuff. That I know a lot of, what? Sorry. Not to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. I, we, we auditioned for a game show and we're on a game show. We'll be on a game show in the middle of May. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you get on your team? Uh, there's five comics. It's myself, Logan Farr, Matt Medina, Josh Bowdit, and Heather Rozier. Cool, oh, cool. And we did a Zoom audition just like this. Yeah. We kicked ass, and then they were like, "All right, you got to road trip it out to LA." Oh, that's Very cool. awesome! Nice. Yeah, I, I have to submit more. I, I fucking I, am I all about game shows. I fucking love it. <laughs> wow, it's a, a lot of comedians always say that New York's the place to do comedy, or they say that yeah. New York's the place to always start comedy. Right. So there's a kind. Of, I know being here, some I mean comedians. I know some comedians too. They they. They like here, but they also all say New York was their good starting spot. Do you feel kind of like you should have gone back to start comedy? Or uh, I'm feeling that now because I was too scared to do comedy at home because people okay. are relentless. They don't give a shit and they tell <laughs> yeah. you exactly how they feel. Right. And I I felt like it just wasn't a, for me. I would I probably would have quit. But oh, really? uh, I just I guess I built up all the resilient resilience really over the years of doing different things and getting rejected and having, and, you know, just working as a, a dancer and experiencing that. So it's, it's a little similar to how it is being treated as a comic. Sometimes yeah. um, we did a lot of private events and things like that. So I think I just, I needed more time and I felt like for me, California was a, a better place for me and it, and it, it did work out. I felt, I felt more support here. And then, then things got crazy. And uh, <laughs> and now I just feel like, you know what, it's time for me to go back home because my kind of comedy here, sometimes people question me. <laughs> um, sometimes they they don't believe that I'm Spanish. Sometimes they don't realize that, yeah, my family is half black. Uh, oh. Sometimes people try and get me on shows because they need a Hispanic female on it. Oh. Um, I'm starting to see that. I'm starting to see like, um, just, it's just not, I, I can't say certain things because it'll offend someone. Like if I do an outdoor show, I can't curse all that kind of stuff. I, I just, I don't know. Like you know it's a, cl- it's a clean show. Oh, yeah. A lot oh, wow. of clean show mm. requests. Um, and I feel like if I, when I do mics, uh, you know, on zoom or, uh, that are from comedians, in New York, it's just so much easier. I feel more comfortable. So I am planning a trip and hopefully, um, with, the people I've met, I can do mics in New York soon. But um, before then, I did one mic in New York during Christmas. 
okay. right before the pandemic. And I was terrified and they don't let you bring the notes up and you had to buy a drink and it's a bucket. And gee, who's first? I was first. Uh, <laughs> all of that shit happened to me. And and I was, you know what? I had nothing to fear because all the co- there was only like five or six comedians in the room because it was Christmas oh, wow. time. No. And yeah. um, they were all really nice to me. I was like, oh, why didn't I just do this all these years ago? So, okay. Well, come out to Sacramento. We're trashing shit out here. You can speak your mind. You can do what you want. And I'll wow. take you around, man. We'll fucking, we'll have a good time. I mean, you still have to buy a drink, but you know. Of course. I don't mind buying <laughs> drinks. I don't mind that. And yes, of course, I'll go to, uh, I did a show in San Jose. I loved it. People in San Jose were great. Yeah. Sacramento, sure, I'll try. It. I'll try. We're Sacramento not that far away from each other. Let's fucking. Yeah, go. and it's not. It's not a big deal, you know. I might just be making excuses because I'm a beginner, you know. I'm still a hey. beginner. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I just there. certain things. Just I don't know. It feels like things are just this very clicky. I don't know. Oh yeah. You're gonna feel that for a while. You're yeah. gonna feel that for a while. Yeah. It, it I like. I way. like doing my stuff and leaving. I don't want to hang out with nobody. <laughs> I just want to go and go home. And that's it. <laughs> I get yeah, that. Good luck. For that. <laughs> Come to Sacramento. We'll turn you out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Wow. I'll, I'll let her Rob out. know you're in town too. You know, he'll okay. know if I don't. So, you know, <laughs> let him know. I'm going to turn her out. Yeah, there she is. It, you know, the whole point was the, my to help cure my stage fright, which has not been cured. It's never going to get cured. You would go oh, in front man. of a stadium full Wait, of people man, and a little. I'm still scared. I'm scared. <laughs> but she, yeah. she's confident in dancing. Yeah. She's not confident. Yeah, fully in comedy. You know what I mean? Like, well, no, it, it, don't she's dancing all of her fucking life. You yeah, know? dancing is like it's muscle memory at some point. You and I a- used to I messed up so much that it didn't matter anymore. I just would go because that lady hated me so much. She, there <laughs> her, she had her tape recorder. Jen Perez, what? You're not kicking on eight. You're not kicking on seven. You need to kick on five. Like stupid shit like that. And I get a whole note list of all my mistakes See, you no. could start a new that thing that. you could be the dancing comic no. do <laughs> i'm working on a joke because i'm working on a joke because i'm always the person like i look like i should be a better dancer than i am but i'm always like the bench i'm the i'm the bench i'm the person that I, i'm a bench warmer. The bench warmer? that's what i am yeah <laughs> they only call me when someone gets hurt they only call me when someone gets hurt <laughs> this girl's beautiful but she can't she can't keep a beat so we're, we're just gonna call her when we need her yeah you can stand there you try clap your hands like this one two <laughs> yeah. and I, so i went to karaoke the other night with this chick who uh works at one of the open mics i'm not gonna say her name but she was like I'm a great singer, like, la, la, la. We went to the, oh. this karaoke thing, and I was like, oh, no. Maybe she should sing again. And so she sang again, and I was like, man, I hope she doesn't think she's a good singer. It was really bad. I was like, ah, oh, that was really, really bad. I don't know why I just said that. But uh, I was, uh, I'm not confident when I do fucking karaoke and shit, and I, oh. I couldn't even imagine trying. I get winded doing that. I couldn't even imagine fucking oh. dancing and trying to talk at the same time. Dancing fucking. Oh, talk. we didn't have to talk. Dancing no, requires no talking. <laughs> That's really why I was doing it. <laughs> The fuck are you doing? That's what I was looking at. She's already, she's already licking up. Oh, are you on. playing the, the harmonica? The tea leaders don't oh, talk. No, no, the no, tea no. leaders, they do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing up. That's it. That's oh, all we did. Cheerleaders, wow. I love it. The head roll is. <laughs> the head roll is. Wow. The head roll is. The head roll is. The head roll The head roll is. Don't forget the spirit fingers. <laughs> Number one. Oh, we have pom poms. Yeah, we have pom poms. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for those bottles. It's the dolphins. They're playing the Jets. Ah! They throw <laughs> bottles at us and shit. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are y'all at? One of the Western bars where they have the the the, the gate or the the, the chicken wire areas. People <laughs> yeah, are animals wire. in the East Coast. They're fucking animals. They're animals. Uh, now I know why you moved here. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I went to Boston, man, there were like pussies there. 
But the uh, most racist country, a city in the U.S. It really, yeah. Well, they love you, you darling. Love Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> love me. I knew it was coming. If me. I go there, they're gonna be like, "Who the hell are you?" The the kitchen is that way. That's what they're gonna tell me. <laughs> I, I was out. I took Dante Barnett from Zoom. Do you know? Do you remember him? Do you know him? Oh, I think I might have met him once. The he's, name he's, yeah, he's fixed, and uh, he was in D.C. for the inauguration. And I was like, well, get a, I'll get an OnlyFans guy to buy you a bus ticket to come out here and hang out with me. Oh, and wow. so, like, I got him a ticket. He came out and then we went to Southie and like they were hell giving me dirty looks. And uh, he's a big old fucking dude. And I was just like, why are they looking at you like that? And he's like, we're not welcome here. And I was yeah. just like, shut the fuck up. Let's go. Let's go eat. You really went that gullible. <laughs> Just, here. They have no idea. They still I'm, learning that there's a double a life here in America. Glasses. I'm a I'm, California girl. Don't 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 use that. First of all, you got them glasses on. Don't play blind. You know where you can where people can go. Yeah. Uh, in that America, nonsense. you can go wherever the fuck you uh, want. Though. No, yeah. darling, not not, not always, not always. We we got. I ain't gonna make this a political thing. Just gonna let no, it go. no, 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 no. <laughs> there are some places tits won't get you by. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know what it's like to be other people. I only know what it's like to. It's, it's all good, girl. Oh. It's all good. We know that. It's all good. So comedy, oh huh? Hey, 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 hey. Jesus. We just, I, we're about I, to go down a I, rabbit hole. I apologize for the cultural appropriation. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's gonna be needed. No. Big old bad says cultural appropriation, just whack her with it. Oh no, no. <laughs> Let's change the subject. I was gonna say I, I have know. no fucking segue, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Yeah. Oh, beer wars, huh? That's a cool sketch thing. Oh yeah, I did a sketch. Yeah. I um I, uh, uh, our, me and Art have been, we worked together for a bit on that sketch. I did two other sketches with him, but I don't know when he's going to release those. They're kind of fun too. Um, that sketch was right during the pandemic, uh, right in the middle of it. We were on shutdown and everyone kind of was being real cautious. And he did it in, in different increments because there was so many people. So we had small groups. And uh, when I did it with that group, I did it with the Budweiser guy. He really got drunk and he worked. <laughs> he really got drunk. He was drinking the whole time that yeah. I was so tired by the time it got to me. And uh, but yeah, I did the, the accent all messed up, but um, it was fun. It was fun to do that sketch. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I was shocked. It was like a, a who's who of the. Uh local comedy scene like jacob yeah. blazer was in that that's right i'm trying to think yeah, of some he, other he filmed it all oh really uh, yeah yeah that makes sense then yeah he's, yeah he's dope i love him yeah it was fun art put that all together i don't know how he did it but it took him a long time to you know make that video and i'm really happy with it, it was fun and then i uh the last show i did with art was a sausage fest last week i think or two weeks ago already um oh, cool and he premiered the video there as well. And it was nice and people were enjoying it. And it's nice to see that. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, Dan Danny, is that your second joint? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't forget the mushroom water. No, I'm not drinking that right now. It's not right now. Because <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> so um, I do want to ask you, it seems like you're on a lot of shows recently and you got one coming up. Yeah. I think what I do this I have Thursday, one, uh, this Thursday in a small little gallery space. So is um, is yeah. it is inside comedy back at uh, in the Bay Area? Because I know up here in Sacramento, there's very I mean, Danny can attest to it. That's very sparse as far as outdoor shows go and well, indoor shows don't even fucking exist. That's not true anymore. Oh, it really? Um, yet. I, well, I know that we're at 50 capacity. I haven't been to an indoor comedy show yet. I have been out and about because I have family over. They decided to come after <laughs> eight years. Oh, let's visit you now <laughs> when you're unemployed. <laughs> I feel you. Um, but <laughs> I know I'm happy they're here, actually very happy. But uh, we, you know, I've been out and about and I see that there's indoor and outdoor seating, which is nice. I don't know about comedy. As far as outdoor mics, a lot of people just were doing it underground. They just kept it going. They did, you know, they took, they did their precautions. They changed mics. I just bought my own mic too, just to be on the safe mm -hmm. side. 
I don't know what and you're talking about. I haven't done comedy live in a long, long time. I I snuck wow. it in. <laughs> I snuck it in a couple yeah, of times. I snuck it in too. <laughs> but everybody was, you know, everybody was being responsible. So I never yeah. felt like I was, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get sick. I would get tested occasionally to make sure. So. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, Danny's lying because she would plug her shows. So there's <laughs> audio evidence. Of that. <laughs> I'll be here and I'll be there. Yeah. Although she's going to Idaho and, you know, Idaho, Idaho don't give Idaho. a fuck. Idaho. No. I got like a Zoom show coming up as well on the 8th, 16th or something. But yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, what do you what would you prefer? Because it's sort of on the fence with the people we interviewed. Do you like the Zoom shows or can you take them or leave them or do you absolutely hate them? Um, at first it just helped me to learn how to build sets. Like I didn't know that yet at the time. So it was a good learning opportunity for me. So at first I really loved it. And then after a while I go, this is bullshit. I don't want to do this no more. (laughs) This is not real. I used to dance for like, you know, and then I started thinking I danced in a stadium. What the fuck am I doing here? And so what I ended up doing was my approach to the Zoom comedy is just really focusing on the joke writing. Sometimes there's workshops, sometimes mics do workshops and they give people, you know, people talk about your set and it yeah. helps you build your set. And then, you know, I go and do occasionally an outdoor mic that was safe and yeah. try it out. And that's I just did the hybrid. And I think that was the best of uh you can do. Um, so I guess I'm just like in the, on the fence. I use it really to learn more. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just letting it be awkward silence. All right. That's good too. I need this shit too. I need to hear the silence because I know I'm going to bomb. I bombed and oh, my last show, I had such a bad day. I had started a part-time job and I messed up somewhere. I don't know what the hell I said, but they let me go after a week. Oops. And they happened to tell me an hour before the show. Oh. <laughs> I love those. I love those moments. I love it when you're like the most broken and you got to go do comedy and you're just like, all right. Yeah, you know, the the one thing I regret was not talking about it on stage. It would have oh, made the whole thing better. Yeah. <laughs> But I pulled through. I pulled through. I was happy. I went up there without my notes. So that's a first. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, does anybody have anything else? Because we do have a very popular thing, but also a random topic that I'm so curious to get okay. everyone's opinion on. Okay. Do it. Anybody? No, we're good. Kosher Christmas. Super. OK, Christmas. So uh, we're going to do this ultra popular thing called inside the comic studio. Uh, we can't. Uh, she said, "Brilliant." I we did. Just, we just <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> we, yeah, her <laughs> mic, mic couldn't pick it up. Um, <laughs> but before we do that, though, Jen, plug your social medias, plug any shows you got coming up, plug your mic for sure. Okay, great. So I am Jen Perez. You can find me on all my socials: YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram at Jen Perez Fun. That's F U N. And uh, on Twitter, it's Jen Perez Fun, the number one. I barely use Twitter, but go ahead and look. There's some tweets on there. <laughs> uh, my my uh, my mixed open mic is I do it on IG Live between 7 and 8 p.m. PT. Uh, again, that's Jen Perez Fun. That's on there. And I have a show in SF this um, Thursday. You can find the tickets on Eventbrite. And it's well, Nightcap Comedy. This comes out Saturday, so you right, you well. were great. I mean, rave reviews all around. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I, you know what I did so great. My aunt bought me a bottle of champagne, and I drank it. It was wonderful. Wow. Um, <laughs> on spot. On spot. Yes, and I have another sh- a Zoom show on the sixteenth. And let me get that info because I'm I I can't remember shit. <laughs> I'm trying to remember who booked me on this show now. Ay 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 ay. By the way, uh, in the meantime, thank you for having your own mic. Oh, the audio sounds great. And oh, oh yeah, I you know, I saved my money and got all the stuff. And, you know, uh, I'm doing what everyone else is doing on employment, just paying off bills and getting all the shit you need. Um, yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I am booked. I am booked for April 16th, 8 p.m. 
uh, CT, and that is on Zoom, and it's hosted by Trisha Sullivan. It is called It Is Hot In Here Comedy Showcase. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's, let's go to Sharon. Let's do Sharon. You can find me on I Am Big Poetry Podcast. That's I Am Big Poetry Podcast on all social medias. It's I Am Big Zine. It is our fourth year anniversary of I Am Big with Izzy Lala and all the rest of them. Uh, you can also check us out on Off the Change with me, Steph, Steph Sander. He's another comedian. And then Christy Nong. And you can also come out to Sacramento Poetry Center. We, I am the vice president and we do shows there and stuff. I did a show yesterday uh, on Monday, but yeah. Go check it out. All right, Danny. Um, this comes out. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, this comes out. This episode Saturday. is brought to you oh, by oh, Hot. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this comes out on Saturday, so by that time, I will already have been in Idaho. If you listen to this and you want to come out to our Sunday show, it's called "Women Are Funny," uh, and it will be on my fucking Facebook page, uh, and then. After that, I uh, am going to be everywhere. I'm going to Phoenix. I'm going to be at the Silly House of Comedy. And then I am uh, on a couple of shows here in Sacramento. And I'm on a show in the Bay Area with Pete Munoz. Uh, and uh, I'm on my first Laughs Unlimited show May 7th. All kinds of shows. Nice. I'm doing a show like I have like 14 shows lined up. So just go to my oh. Facebook page. Check it out. Nice. Also, our Instagram, yeah. Rad Chick Forever. Or my Instagram. I'm not the uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> working on it, Ratchet Prairie working no more. No, I just I forget to post shit on there. So, I can imagine why. Because <laughs> I'm not living my best life. I don't want to fucking. Yeah, life. fuck that shit. It's almost the end of the world. We don't know what's gonna happen. Just keep <laughs> living that best life. Nine, we got dogs. Be here. <laughs> All right, Rob. Oh, you were talking about that. Women are funny. Uh, have you seen that documentary on FX? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, what hysterical? Yeah, uh, did a great fucking job. Uh, anyway, why am I hearing back? I don't know. I think it's because um, there you go. Yeah, it's Danny's computer. <laughs> the audio. God damn it. All right. Well, get my side project. Set up dad's podcast. I do that with my buddy, uh, Mike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk yeah, about yeah. parenting and throw in some dick jokes. Uh, we recently just had. Uh, the guys from the pop culture hoot nanny. Uh, we talk about uh, the fucked up movies we watched. And uh, when I was writing it, I realized my first movie that I ever saw was uh, at the age of like five. And it was the Island of Dr. Moreau. Ooh. And uh, that explains a lot. So uh, <laughs> check it out. I think the first movie I ever saw was the brave little toaster. Oh, see, awesome. that's a good little first movie. That's not bad. So Old school. Stupid. He was 19 at the time. I, my first movie was Poltergeist. My Jesus. Freddy <laughs> Krueger on a date. And I was like, crying. your first movie was on a date. My mom took me when I was a toddler, when she went on a date. And took oh, she was on a date. Uh, <laughs> you were with those people. <laughs> <laughs> bringing babies to the not. movie theater. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you were that family. <laughs> I'm not. I was just a little innocent fucking baby. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't watch scary movies that day. Thanks, mom. Jeez. What, you, what was your first up. movie? It must have been a Disney movie. I can't remember. <laughs> I feel like it might have been uh, like Cinderella or something. I can't remember. Mm. But I saw the scary movies, too. They let me watch everything. I watched Chucky <laughs> and Poltergeist, everything. So did that we, mess with you? I, my, I will watch 90210 with my family. Fuck yeah. I love that. Ed, Ed, Ed Chappelle, show, oh, Dave Vitale, all that stuff. My uncle be like, you got to watch this guy. He's funny. Yeah. <laughs> they still watch Dave Vitale up all night. Yeah. Uh, oh, That's yeah. Right. Why is that not on tape or on DVD or anything? Uh, it, you, you can get it on, on Amazon. Really? I was looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just don't have the player. It's not streamable. Oh. Oh, okay. It's like DVD. Oh, it's a DVD, actual. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to buy a DVD. You can't stream that have... stuff. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can get anything on Amazon. Yeah. Not everything. I was thinking you could also get like farts uh, at some point. They're just going to start they, selling farts in a jar. 
They have sold those. They have? Oh they my have God. Sold those. That's Jesus. gross. Maybe yeah. I have a new job. <laughs> no wonder my little my little cousin was mentioning that. We were on a tangent, me and him laughing. He's like, the parts. And then they're going to sell poop. And it's going to call the toilet Amazon. He, was, he had a whole bunch of things. <laughs> um, follow me on Twitter at the big Nick J. Okay, Jen, have you listened to the podcast before? I listened to a few episodes. Yes, I like it. I'm sorry if I'm I'm taking over and talking too much. You got to no, tell no, me no. to shut up. No, you're perfect. No, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're one of the few that I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of the few. It's way better than <laughs> every female that is on as a guest. He says that. So don't don't feel special. Oh, that's OK. Yeah. That, I, you know what? I'm, I'm I'm happy that he likes women. That's don't make good. that look, Sharon. She's got you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys are firing shots, man. <laughs> Love it. I love controversy. If you count all the words he said already this episode, it's already more than like the last eight. Uh, <laughs> all right. He he has you there. <laughs> all right. Um, so you're sorry, Sharon. It, take a stab at us. Come on. I'll give you a couple. No, you're, you're right. <laughs> it's it's honesty right now. I'm like looking at us and like. I'm honest. You're right. <laughs> I am like that. All right. So you're probably familiar with our Inside the Comic Studio. We ask all comedians all right. the same five questions. So the first question is first joke that landed well. First joke that landed well. Uh, do you want me to tell it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you know what? Uh, for my 30th birthday, I, I decided to go on a girl's trip to Vegas. Yeah, I was going to go to Vegas. Uh, but the thing was, you know, it was like seven girls in a hotel room. You know, it takes forever to get ready. My friends didn't know this about me. They'd never hung out with me like that. Like, I can't make myself throw up. Uh, uh, you know, so I, I, I kept like my friends were trying to help me. They were putting their fingers in my mouth. I know that sounds weird. Um, <laughs> I'm not a lesbian. Uh, but, but they were trying. They were trying to make me throw up and it just couldn't happen. So they're like, all right, girls, just just get yourself together. We're going to go to dinner. So we went out to dinner, and would you believe it? Jamie Foxx was there. Jamie Foxx was at dinner. You know what? I think I threw up on Jamie Foxx. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, that, that's what it was. That was my first joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did. I have a picture with Jamie Foxx. I asked him to take a picture. I did not throw up on him, but that oh. was the joke. Oh, that would have been better. Oh, that so <laughs> would have. No. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, that could be a thing where you find famous people and just barf on them <laughs> and then ask them to take a picture. <laughs> wow. Dude, I'm fucking doing it. It's, it's, cra <laughs> it's crazy enough to work. It's crazy I think it is. All oh, oh, to remember by God, dog. <laughs> That person threw up on me right there. It's like, oh, you remember they meet me? people yeah. every day. They don't remember anybody. They will remember you. Oh, they'll remember me. I'm telling you. <laughs> True. All right. Next question. Favorite thing about your local comedy scene? Oh, you know what my favorite thing is? Uh, a lot of the men, even though they kind of say nasty shit and whatever, and like, you know, they just, some dudes go overboard. All of them have been very nice to me and very respectful. I've never had a bad situation. I've had funny situations, but no one ever tried to do anything to me or anything like that. So I really appreciate the male comedians in my community here. They're really That's respectful. That's fucking awesome. That's a yeah. good up for that because don't no come to sacramento said that. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say don't come to sacramento because i mean you know occasionally you know what would happen occasionally some fool would be like oh you're new to comedy here's my card and then i would just give it to another male comedian i go here maybe he'll help you with your jokes <laughs> <laughs> nice be fine here. but we that was the extent of it nobody was like you know yeah <laughs> trying to get you in a van that smells like barbecue no or, no no you no. know all right, that's I get in a van that smelled like barbecue. That's how they get me. I don't know how they get the others. So I don't know. <laughs> I also leave. I didn't like that. I didn't like staying out. I like telling my jokes and then leaving. So yeah, you seem responsible. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, next question. The exact opposite. One thing you dislike would like to see changed in your local scene. Uh, I'd like to see that they include more. Um, comics of color it seems like it's hard to find the nights where there's comics of color i'm seeing the change now because of everything but i remember in the beginning it was so hard to find another hispanic comedian like i couldn't find anyone to practice spanish jokes nobody wanted to do comedy in spanish 
Um, I couldn't, I didn't see a lot of people that kind of look like me or could relate to some of the stories and situations I might be um, telling. It was just, um, I just think that maybe I just didn't find the right groups of people, but it appeared to me as though there's not enough people, of, uh, n- not enough open mics for people of color. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question. Favorite local comedian. Oh my gosh, this is a hard one. I like everyone. <laughs> I really do. I hurt. hurt uh, some feelings. Come on. I'm trying to think of who's my favorite. I'm um, so bad with names too. I want to say I'm going to say Terry. Terry Dorsey. Terry Dorsey was very sweet to me, and I've seen him do his actual live set, and he's always checks up on me, and I think he's great. I think he's out there really working hard, and he always did, and he used to host an open mic at the Milk Bar. And he put up with a lot of shit, man. And the people, he had to drive so far. And every night we were there Sunday night, like midnight. He's like, you motherfuckers ain't even nice to each other. <laughs> you know? just like, but uh, uh, I would say Terry Dorsey is one of my favorites. Yeah. All right. Lastly. Terry Dorsey. All right. Lastly, advice to new comedians. Advice to new comedians. Um, don't listen to the other open micers. They don't know shit. Good advice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So random topic time. I am so looking forward to a lady's perspective on this because yeah. Rob sent me an article. Now, before we get into uh, the research behind the article and the importance of the information within that research, ladies, is there such a thing as a handsome penis? Yes. Yes. There, I've seen a beautiful penis. Hey, just one. <laughs> yeah, I've seen two. I've seen a few. Okay, maybe two. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah. Like are are so they're sort of like a like a white tiger in the wild. Like they're just yeah, you come us- across them. Usually it's the ones that look clean and healthy. Mm. Danny, would you agree? <laughs> look, she's agreeing. It's true. Um I say they're uh cut well. Uh they have a yes. nice tip. They've been true. Uh, we're talking about one of my favorite things. Uh, and so, yeah, I would say, like, you know, they're well-groomed. You don't lose yeah. the tree in the forest. That's right. Um, yeah. You don't yeah, like the German hiding in the bushes? Normally, yeah. they don't smell like balls, you know. Ew, yeah, no. Like, no. And don't. They don't smell like goat cheese and balls and farts, you know. Yeah. And you should like, be a clean man. And hopefully, like, before I'm looking at your penis, like, it's at least semi-hard, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to look at your flaccid ass penis and I don't want to put it in my mouth. Uh, Why don't you work on it for a minute and then I'll do what I need to do. Yeah. Come on, get them there at least halfway. Mm -hmm. This is a joint effort. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's like a man of a certain age. Oh yeah. 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 You got a young guy. You got no problem. (laughs) You just go. (laughs) <laughs> but sometimes you also get something else with that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen, I would say, out of all the dicks, I've seen um, uh, three. I mean, three, and, and three, and three pretty them, dicks. Two of them I still talk to. I mean, I only fuck one of them, but two of them I still talk to. I, I thought they're. I thought you talk to the guy or the dick itself. The guy, the guy. You don't have to really talk to them. They don't give a shit. They don't want to talk yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 All right. So, um, I definitely want to. Oh, I wanted to ask we're looking you guys. At penises here, huh? We gonna look at penises? No. no. Well, I'm saying, I'm wondering what you're throwing out. Like, no. You're gonna pull up penises. See, this was so. Uh, since I do the parenting podcast, I go to this site oh, called snap. Fatherly a lot to find stories. And they were talking about what, what makes a makes penis attractive penises. woman. Now, so first of all, the one thing that ruined it was penis girth is more important. And I was like, uh, well, I got a number two pencil, so I'm not <laughs> doing yeah, well. Gotta, girth is your worth. Yeah. So that was not good. But then I scrolled down a little more and apparently these are the signs of an attractive penis, which totally ruined me. All right, ladies. The ratio of girth to length is just right. 6.3 inches long and 4.3 inches around. Yeah. What if it was the other way around? Uh, no. 
four point three and know, six around. Because they're that wide ones. About average. That sounds about average. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with her. Yeah. yeah. We looked at. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Mm, Danny, I think we you know guys are a little insecure. <laughs> Jen, what I'm married and have a kid. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Jen, what would you say the average penis size is? Probably five inches. Okay, good. You're yes. <laughs> Way better than Danny G. Over <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or uh, an insult, but okay. <laughs> he's, he, he's just about there. He's about an inch and a half away from five, so he'll take it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I said like seven to eight, so you know. I believe no, you said like, nine. What? what? It is a nine. I did, Asia May said nine. I did okay. not. All right. More than eight and a half can't go on me. I fucking don't want that. How, how yeah, that's average? too much. That's too, that's much. too much. I'm five three. I'm five two. I don't want that in my intestines. Like, what is it? Where's that going? <laughs> I'm a small person. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't need all that shit. No, uh-uh. ram it in there. Just get out. No. Yeah, and, and a lot of the times those guys with big dicks, they they don't know what they're doing. It's they like they don't know how to use them. No, come on, None. man. Okay. None. I'm sure there's plenty of guys with little dicks that don't know how to use them either. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. They put in more. They they know they're they know they're lucky to be there, so they put in more <laughs> effort. Yeah, yeah. They put in way more effort because they they're do. Just happy wow. to be there. so much better. Wow. <laughs> They, they're into that. it, you know, because they it, feel it only works one way because you don't get that with women that are insecure about what they got going on. Oh, oh yeah, you do. It's a oh, yeah, you do. like, I don't, know. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't have an ugly pussy. You, I don't you, know. You, if you I did, think- I don't know. Sometimes the top, they just think the top side is all. Eh, no, like, no, no. I'm talking about down there. Yeah, your pussy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, the only time that is is if you can't fit. Then you got problems. Yeah, you've had that problem. I was gonna say that's <laughs> never happened to me. Sure. <laughs> There's only one person in this room that has that problem that he, he yeah. clearly knows it. <laughs> you don't have to say it. Uh-huh. You know. Come on. That's yeah, like that's like, a thing. So I got bit, so I got big dick energy ego. He's so no, he's slinging at least a nine. I'll give him. I don't know. Every any uh, Hispanic or person of color I've been with is always big, is always bigger than other races. And the and the skinny <laughs> like the in shape skinny guys because I know sometimes like, yeah I didn't fuck skinny guys for a long time but then I was like all right and then I was like damn. Yeah. Okay. Josh means trips on his. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She's right about that. The in shape guys that usually the in shape like sometimes yeah sometimes those bodybuilders uh uh-uh. uh so yeah but. Beeping. Yeah. But but Rob and I like we got that like upper fat dick area. It's like a, a pillow fo-pa? for your forehead. You <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a pillow for my forehead. Yeah, like it bounces you back. It's like, I'm you not, know, not sucking your dicks. So. <laughs> wow. All right, well <sighs> Let's move on because, yeah, 6.3 inches long, 4.3 inches round were found to be ideal. One thing it did say is um that I guess for a long-term relationship, women don't really want a big dick because, and they said this, I don't remember where they said the pains of having sex with a big dick. You don't want all the time. And I was like, yes, I was like, I, yeah, that's never happened. I've never had a woman like <laughs> can't walk afterwards. Like this whole article just really fucked me up completely. <laughs> oh, hold on. Heather, Heather's right here. And Heather likes big. Uh, oh, big there you go. Bit. Yeah. All right, bring a bring another girl in. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm not like that. I'm too innocent. I'm too innocent. Jen, we're talking, ah. or Heather, we're talking about dicks. Uh, and <laughs> find an attractive penis. Uh, the average is about six three to four point three. What do you like? What? She's no, 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 no. Four point three around. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. What are we talking about? Four point three around. She's part of the Niner gang, though. Like nine and up. Yeah. Jesus. Is okay. But a nine is the eighth. Okay. <laughs> How about if it looks like two tuna cans stacked on top of each other? Cool. Like, like, <laughs> like helicopter dick is slanging. Like not okay. Pencil. Yeah. How big is helicopter boy? Uh, yeah. And huh? about five inches around, probably. And he's waving his helicopter at five inches. I would uh, around say the three and a half, four inches. No, I'm si- he's. Anyway, never mind. If He's I had five inches, inches I wouldn't be running around I showing like it to everybody. I like the surprise ones. I like the surprise one that looks small. Oh, okay. It's a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> the grower to the shower. <laughs> okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hey. Hey, it's a good surprise. Something. It's magic. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> yeah, it goes from, oh, this reminds me of when I volunteered at that preschool. Ah. 
Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> bigger is better. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That makes sense because it's. Yeah. Yeah. But, I agree with that. Uh, so term. One thing it did say, which I thought was a little weird. Um, the one thing that makes an attractive penis is that it is attached to a partner who is trustworthy. Now, if your partner is trustworthy, does that automatically make their penis sexier? But it, it depends on the person it's on, you know? It makes makes you accept it more. Yeah, you feel more oh. comfortable. Yeah. Hmm. If you're yeah, thinking so it's nasty and dirty because uh -huh. who knows where it's been. That's right. And right. then you're like, and oh my God, I'm making poor life choices. I'm this age and why am I still banging these young boys? It's like, it's, this is not good. Right. Like right. this fool don't know how right. to wipe his ass. Why am ass? I still at the fucking uh, high school? I was just kidding about the preschool <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so am I. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know? I take whatever I could get. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> I just play like R. Kelly over and over again. Ah! Get no, you know? not that no more. <laughs> they don't even know who R. Kelly is. It's such a sad thing. It's all lost. You know, they have no idea. Oh, they know who R. Kelly is. <laughs> the, they, the younger the younger boys, they ask a lot of permission to do things. So They're so eager, too, though. For? They're so eager. Just do it already. <laughs> just do it. It's yeah. tough, though, because on one hand, you got okay. me, too. If you're yeah, here, yeah, though, no, I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It's fucked. I mean, I'm glad I'm not dealing with that shit anymore. If you're here, obviously, <laughs> you have my consent. You're yeah, here. yeah, you're here. I'm here. That's not always the case. It, it, That's it, true. It, it is with me. I'll say. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> it's not very sensitive with the heat. I don't need you to ask every. If you I can get Danny home, you're. That's a yes. But I'm not uh, slutty this year. All right, and then. Uh, Last thing I want to bring up is groomed pubic hair goes a long way towards making a penis look attractive. Yes. Trim that shit, Nick. I love how all three of the women at the same yeah. time were like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's the most obvious thing. Yeah. It's just obvious. If you get a mouthful of hair, that's just, that ruins everything. That's hilarious <laughs> is what that is. <laughs> when you come up and you're just like, uh, no. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> Uh -uh. I, I gotta stop. Your and it makes it look bigger. Your wife must love you because I would never. Mm -mm. No, but yeah, all those things are true. So I bet you a woman wrote this article. Yeah. Well, yeah, well it's probably. based on um, some. Let's see. It's a study. Uh, yeah. Somebody okay. did a study by Dr. Norman Rupengrief. Norma. Uh, Norma. Norma. Sorry. Norma yeah, was not like. All doctors are men. <laughs> no, I was like, I'm fed up with this shit. These fools don't know how to groom. They don't know nothing. Let me send them some pointers. Because we agreed on all aspects of that. There yeah. wasn't a time where we all disagreed, except for the size wise. The size, yeah. Yeah. And that just depends on the person. I feel like it, it depends on the vessel. Who is yeah. the person? Yeah. Who's the ship? What, <laughs> what model does she have? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, one yeah, thing gonna lease this. <laughs> one thing I thought was weird is in the study it said uh, women didn't draw a distinction between men with surgically corrected hypospadias, which I've never heard of. It's a condition where the urethra opening is on the underside of the head. Wow. Yeah, I was actually. They were worried about that. Fuck, my kid's gonna hate this. Uh, before <laughs> he was born, they did something. I guess because he had some something wrong with his umbilical cord, but um, something they gave him said one of the side effects w could be that thing where, and he came out fine. So that's good. But my little brother, I don't remember why, but he, when he was like six, for some reason he had to go and be circumcised. And I, like, I was like, in? why didn't you guys do this as a, like a baby? You know, like what, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? And I never, obviously I never really asked him. We're not that close, but uh, I just remember it was really traumatic. Cause he was like, you know, like when they're babies, they have a little like bell on mm -hmm. them. They don't know, but when they're six and he's like, what the fuck? Like he was so traumatized. I had a buddy that did it at 30. <laughs> oh, <Damn. God. laughs> and that was, I and mean, he had it. He had to, it was like a medical thing. It was like something was wrong with it, mm. but that was just he regrets it all the time just i wish yeah. but he had to but they kind of fucked it up too so Ooh, yeah. i haven't seen this but you know yeah i don't know about that yeah i don't know i don't uh i don't know there's not a lot of pretty dicks out there but there are some there are some but you know someone's pretty dick is another woman's ugly dick you know everyone's yeah. different 
I think it has to do with what they eat. Normally, like, you know, like dudes that uh, eat healthy. And they Are you talking about healthy. cleanliness again? Yeah, cleanliness. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wash your dicks, boys. That's all we're yeah. saying. Wash your dicks. enough. And trim yeah. your pubic hair, Nicholas. Mm-hmm. You know you are listening to podcasts. Get that manscape. Get that manscape. Come on. Yeah. If There's we all only could get them. Coupon codes for that shit everywhere. Come on. Right? If we could only promote them, I would be crazy. Right? Come on. You know, if you want to see hot chicks like Jen or myself or Heather, yeah, you fucking get it up. Like work on yourself. Self care. Yeah. yeah. Watch Put next next episode. I'll get sponsored by Manscape. Right. I mean, you spend. Yeah. Yeah. It's I you it. Speak it to <laughs> existence. Put some hippie shit, like hippie white girl shit on it. Speak it to existence. Mercury <laughs> is in retrograde. White. I need money. <laughs> Put on a vision board. <laughs> Put it on a vision board. Yeah. <laughs> we got manscape. Gosh. Get that manscape money. Oh, we have the the, uh, the balls cleaner company. Yes, we did. Ballsy. Yeah. 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 Ballsy brand. So I'm Ball curious. Yeah, all right. So let's say hypothetically after this episode, I, I go and I manscape all the way off. Okay. No, no, it doesn't have to be off. Or do I give it like a buzz cut, like an army kind like of thing? Like a buzz cut. Like, yeah. a, like, like just have Danielle do it. Hey. Uh, they, women do love that. Ask, do ask your wife what she wants. I mean, I'll tell you what I like, but I mean, I'm not sucking your dick. So ask her what she wants. Yeah. You got to ask the ship, you know, like, you know, equipment yeah. that you, you're working on right now. Tell her that you have a pimple down there that she wants that she's going to want to get to. But you got to trim to get to it. Just ask her. Do you like it like this or like this? Two <laughs> <laughs> <New> face. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Pop your pimples. That's so gross. She fucking gets off on it. See? I like that. I used to do that when I had a boyfriend. I, yeah, my kid likes it. You gotta, you gotta I like know popping where love pimples. Is. Yeah, that's I gotta unconditional go. love. I gotta go. That's unconditional, right? There. No, no, don't knock the feeling. No, thank you. I'll we, leave it there just to we, annoy you. We still have a couple of minutes. Danny oh, D. fine. Just let's not talk about gross shit like that. Okay. I can't, you guys are gross. You won't fucking. Uh, oh, now we're like, gross. Maybe she likes your pubic hair in her mouth. I don't know. She might. <laughs> she might. I mean, there's, there's, I, you know, I've dated dudes. They like hairy legs. They didn't want the girls to I've shave heard that their legs. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. I mean, I, I could go either way on that, really. Doesn't really bother right. me. Honestly, that what doesn't bother this? me. The shit women go through. Yeah. To like look, you know, quote unquote pretty. Like mm. there's you gotta shave your arms. Well, some people shave their arms, shave their legs, shave their kuka, shave mm-hmm. their armpits, mm-hmm. and then mm. they gotta put on fucking makeup. Fuck that, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd rather I mean, be on time. <laughs> you rather be on time? No, yeah. I like I like making them wait. No, now motherfucker, you can wait. <laughs> No, no, wait. You want me shaved like you a dolphin? Me, you, you want know? me to look beautiful? Well, beauty takes time. You're going to have to wait. Out, <laughs> out, <laughs> but what happens when you wait and they still come out looking the same as when they started? Ah, uh, well. well you better know that. Run, man. Run. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you got to go the other way. Maybe she's maybe, not the right girl for you. Yeah, have her watch a YouTube video. <laughs> the other way like dudes? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> maybe. I appreciate the woman's effort for you, then maybe you should believe. It's yeah. not for me. Saved everything. I shaved everything before. Was it was weird. It felt weird because it's, you know, it's kind of like wow. the worst part about shaving the crack is that when the the stubble comes in, then you got yeah. stubbly butt crack. Yes. That's not yeah. good. Yeah. It hurts. No. It's not good. Yeah, try shaving a pussy you can't see. It's Wait, fucking hold on. great. Oh it, yeah. Oh my god, that's yeah. ridiculous. It's, hold on, uh, Jen. By Braille. Jen, did you just admit that you shaved your your asshole? I think every woman has done that. I think every any other person, really yeah no. I well, I'm fucking. I'm a hairy person. I haven't shaved my asshole. I have never had a Brazilian either. Like I don't. I've want- had a Brazilian, but that that's because I did samba. I needed to do it for the dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not a pleasant experience. I don't How long does that shit last? Like a week? It Two- it lasts a month sometimes. Yeah, like it lasts a good amount of time, and it's it, it it's better. It feels better, but then it's the painful and embarrassing that you know you're paying another girl. Well, I don't care. Up in that. there, I'd do a back crack and sack. I'm but... always afraid. They, I'm always afraid they're gonna open the really? door. I'm afraid they're gonna open the door in the middle and just leave it open. I'm like, ah! <laughs> 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 
No, Bro, you were you, just you, too. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I always tell you, put your legs in a butterfly. <laughs> 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 the thing is though when you're super hairy though they got to figure out where to stop because it just yes. looks like you got caught on fire or something <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just away. Ah. oh it's, man god I, i'm eating dinner after this, and this oh is, gosh it's not the right topics i'll no. tell you what though this is opening my fucking eyes i didn't know about handsome penises i didn't uh, know I that know. women get their their asshole like whack i didn't know that yeah just don't, don't get it bleached no, bleached I knew of, but wax? Okay. No. That just seems wrong. Mm. Yeah, some people, because some people are fair skin and they don't have a lot of hair, so they just bleach it. Yeah. I don't know, they're, but they're actually bleaching the hole, not the hair. Oh, that's different, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Is that a gay thing? No. <laughs> no it's not, it's Why are you like, asking me? <laughs> I brought it up, bro. I thought you were the expert. You said they, they're bleaching inside the asshole. <laughs> yeah, they just so like, sometimes what are they doing that for? It gets stained after years of... <laughs> years of um, <laughs> shit coming out of there. That's, a, that's, that's as smart as when Trump was telling people to drink bleach. Like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you just doing wanted there? a clean asshole. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have anything else before we let Danny D try and eat after uh, talking about popping pimples? Get some sausage <laughs> <laughs> and mashed potatoes. Put some sauerkraut on it with oh, white yeah. sauce on there. Nice uh, white, yeah, white sauce. By the way, <laughs> Danny D, you, you'll love to know that one time she was popping a zit and it went in her face. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gone. <laughs> she left. Oh, God, you, you have disgusted the girl. Yes, there done. you go. She yeah. just left. She All left. right, Kai. Jen. Sincerely, thank you for coming on. This thank was you. great. This was a great way to kick off this month long women in comedy. I sincerely uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was fun. Uh, have me back anytime. Definitely. Definitely. All right, everybody, stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Later. Bye. Take care.